American Samurai, 1992. The story is about Andrew, a young boy, is adopted by a Japanese samurai master and trained in swordsmanship with the master's son Kenjiro. Out of jealousy, Kenjiro joins the mafia and vows to exact revenge on Andrew. When Andrew decides to find him and set things straight, things don't seem to go as smoothly as he planned, and a misunderstanding leads Kenjiro into a Turkish arena to battle swordsmen from around the world. The movie is super entertaining, that is not to be taken too seriously. The movie is a cliché road, cheesy martial arts mayhem and a very gory film indeed which suits well for Mortal Kombat fans. If you enjoy Mortal Kombat then you will enjoy this kind of film, however, you will love it for what it is, which is a brainless martial arts entertainment, worthy to be ranked with the Mortal Kombat film from the 90s. It also marks the debut of a new actor named Mark DeCascos. Does the name sound familiar in the world of Mortal Kombat? Well, that's because Mark DeCascos portrayed Kung Lao in Mortal Kombat Legacy Season 2. Best of the Best 2, 1992 in an underground fight club, Black Belt Travis Brickley is killed after losing to the evil martial arts master Bracus. Travis's death is witnessed by Walter Grady, the son of his best friend Alex Grady. Alex and his partner, Tommy Lee, vow to avenge their friend's death by defeating Bracus and shutting down the fight club. Best of the Best 2 is an awesome and fun martial art action flick sequel with three of its main cast from the first movie. The underground tournament is similar to that of the Mortal Kombat tournament, and it also showcases various styles of martial arts such as wrestling, kung fu, boxing, and taekwondo. It features an all-star cast such as Eric Roberts, Chris Penn, Wayne Newton, and Ralph Moeller. Ralph Moeller's portrayal as Bracus is highly intimidating like that of Goro, and despite his size, Ralph is very fluent when it comes to the fight scenes. Chris Penn and Eric Roberts also did a wonderful job when it comes to the fight scenes. Philip Reed, who directed and acted in this movie shines in the role of Tommy Lee, where he brings out one of, if not his best martial art performance which makes you wonder what would happen if he was cast as Liu Kang in the 1995 live-action movie. Had he been cast for the role he might have become a bigger star. Quest, 1996, in the slums of New York City during the 1920s, petty thief Chris Dubois finds himself on the run from the police. At the docks, he hides on an outbound freight ship leaving for Asia. Taken in by the mysterious Lord Dobbs as the boat docks in Thailand, Dubois is introduced to the underground world of martial arts fighting. His training culminates in a secret battle between the world's greatest fighters that takes place before a select audience in Tibet. If you are a fan of Johnny Cage, then you gotta love Van Damme. The Quest is Van Damme's first movie where he directs and stars in it, this is actually a well-acted and very fun movie. The fight scenes are great, and you have great performances by James Bond and Lord Raiden. Also, there is a great villain in this movie too. Despite its low story, it has some decent character development and awesome fight scenes which showcase various types of martial arts. There is some element in this movie that is similar to that of Mortal Kombat besides the theme of fight tournaments, such as Van Damme, that looks like a ninja mime, and the fact that the prize is a golden dragon just like the logo of Mortal Kombat. In summary, this movie has a Mortal Kombat vibe with Johnny Cage himself as the lead.
Game of Death, 1978, the sister of Lee's character was to be kidnapped by Korean gangsters. They used her to force the hero to enter a five-level tower and retrieve a particular item, though this had never been revealed. To retrieve it, he had to progress through all five levels of the tower, with each one being guarded by a martial artist of a different style. It's not clear what would have happened once he got the item, but it can be assumed that the movie would have ended with him beating the Korean crime boss and saving his sister. Despite the fact that 100 minutes of the film was shot, much of the footage was lost in the archives of the film studios, and roughly there are only 40 minutes of the original footage. The director of Enter the Dragon, Robert Klaus, decided to finish the film using stand-ins. The final product was released five years after Lee's death, and despite its mixed critical reviews, it was still a financial success, but what remains of the original footage is what is truly interesting. Many big names in the martial arts film industry such as Dan Inosanto and Jai Hyun Jae appear as masters of a level of the pagoda, but the most unique is the final boss Lee must overcome, played by NBA superstar Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Too bad that out of this 40-minute footage only a few of it manages to be used in the final product. This movie is simply perfect for fans of Mortal Kombat. Enter the Dragon, 1973, Bruce Lee plays a martial arts expert determined to help capture the narcotics dealer whose gang was responsible for the death of his sister. Lee enters a kung fu competition in an attempt to fight his way to the dealer's headquarters with the help of some friends. The similarity between Mortal Kombat and Enter the Dragon is uncanny. It is about a Shaolin monk who is coerced into fighting in an annual tournament to the death. In both movies, the tournament is set on a secret island only reachable by boat. Apparently, the only way to get to these islands is by leaving from Hong Kong. The two main characters are drawn into this tournament when their younger siblings are killed by a co-conspirator. Besides the plot, there's also a similarity between the character of Mortal Kombat and Enter the Dragon. Bruce Lee is known as the most influential martial artist who ever lived. Lee claimed his fighting style was no style at all. He named his fighting philosophy Jeet Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist, which gardens the process of learning martial art as a constant effort to research and experiment. This was so influential that it was adapted for Mortal Kombat's Liu Kang.